This is the first follow-up video for the Sense Electricity Monitor. If you haven't already seen the original video, please click here to see the unboxing and two-week review. I've waited to do this video so I can get in two full billing periods with Toronto Hydro to compare the results. It's now been 83 days since I installed it on September 21st, 2016. In that time, Sense has been able to isolate nine devices. This is less than what many users have been reporting on the Sense users Facebook group and subreddit. So this is the first takeaway, which I fully expected, but many more inexperienced users have been commenting about. Results take time. Unfortunately, the majority of users have no understanding of how machine learning works and sense set expectations too high. If you visit their website, you'll see lots of bubbles showing which devices can be isolated, but this isn't something that will happen overnight. Machine learning requires copious amounts of data, and hence, sense gets better the more users install the system and provide their data to it. The system also needs to see electrical devices in their natural environment. So this is one of the reasons why Sense doesn't allow training, unlike the Nurio, because this skews the data. Despite multiple blog posts and comments by Sense, these misunderstandings keep getting repeated over and over on the forums, unfortunately. Some users have commented that they feel like they're beta testers, and in essence, we are. Early adopters like myself are feeding the data into Sense that will allow it to tune its algorithms and get better at detecting and isolating devices. While I'll address this in a separate crowdfunding slash pre-ordering video, Sense isn't a traditional retail product that you can pick up at your local big box electronic store and install, seeing results instantly. As someone who pre-orders or backs a hardware startup like Sense, you're exchanging a monetary discount for being a beta tester. While it would be more upfront for Sense to say this, they're not like Google who can label products as beta and still have people buy or pay for it. Bottom line, if you want better, faster results, wait until next summer when the system will be even more robust after having learned for a whole year. Getting back to results, one of the reasons I believe in Sense's capabilities and its ability to isolate devices is that it's already able to isolate a low wattage device such as these 29 watts worth of LEDs in the closet. And it's able to do this no matter how busy electrically our home is. So what I mean by busy electrically is that the washing machine, microwave, stoves, and other devices can be running simultaneously and Sense has no difficulty isolating the unique device signature of the DC power adapter that powers those lights. Conversely, Sense hasn't yet isolated more complex devices like the aforementioned washer, dryer, and microwave, but from a signal processing perspective, that Sense can isolate specific patterns accurately is already a big piece of the puzzle. Next up is stringing together more complex patterns, such as the washing machine, which goes through different electrical draws as part of a single cycle. This also applies to devices with multiple settings, like the fan hood, which has different speeds. One good example of this is my desktop computer. Sense finally isolated it around day 78, and it shows up as a base load of around 85 watts during normal use. However, if I do something power intensive, such as rendering a video with the discrete graphics card, I know it's pulling a lot more power, but this extra power shows up in the unknown bubble instead of being added to the desktop's bubble. One thing that I do want to specifically point out is that my desktop is plugged into an uninterruptible power supply, a UPS, and despite this extra level of isolation and noise, Sense is able to pick it up, which again bodes well for their machine learning and signal processing abilities. Next up is accuracy. Many users have observed that Sense is underreporting, and if you take a multimeter and measure your phases, here's my phase A, 119.2, phase B, 120.2, but if you go into the Sense app, you can see it's underreporting at 114.9 and 114.7. So depending on how much it's underreporting, it can lead to anywhere from a 1 to 5% error. This also shows up in solar production, and while I don't have solar, Sense is aware of these issues and the calibration, and hopefully they can change the gains to bring the numbers more in line. To look at accuracy in the logging, this is Nurio's log for the billing period, and if I log into October, Nurio recorded 373 kilowatts, while Toronto Hydro recorded 367 kilowatts, a difference of only 6.6 .6 kilowatts, or an over-measurement of only 1.78%. Moving over to the Sense app, there's no automated billing period or way to export the data yet, so I tally up each day manually. From October 3rd through November 2nd, with interpolated data for 8 days, Sense measured a total of 372.8 kilowatts, while Toronto Hydro billed 367 kilowatts, 
an overmeasurement of 5.5 kilowatts or 1.48 percent. Moving to November, Nuria recorded 376 kilowatts, while Toronto Hydro recorded 365 kilowatts, a slightly larger difference of 11.6 kilowatts or an overmeasurement of 3.1 percent. Census totals for November 3rd through December 2nd with interpolated data for two days is a total of 378.67 kilowatts, while Toronto Hydro billed 365 kilowatts, a difference of 13.4 or 3.55 percent. One other thing that I discovered is that during a brownout, Sense can have issues reconnecting if it loses power for less than five seconds. Over the past few months, we've had nearly a dozen power blips where the power goes out for less than two seconds. It's enough to trip the clocks on the stove and microwave as well as disconnect the sense as can be seen by these periods of no data. If your sense isn't sending data, I suggest you flip the breakers and reset it, keeping it off for at least five seconds. When I originally encountered this issue, it was difficult to diagnose because when the power is re restored, sense doesn't sound the chimes again like it does during initial installation, so there's no way to know that it's back up and running. Hopefully a firmware update will add this back in. To simulate this issue, here is Sense actively receiving data. I'm going to go up here and disconnect the power for less than one second. If you disconnect for less than one second, Sense won't be connected to Wi-Fi, but it also won't restart it on its own. So if you ever have an issue where Sense isn't sending data, reset the breakers and make sure it's off for at least five seconds. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and back in. To know that Sense is actually booting up properly, if you wait a few seconds, you'll see some lights over by the antenna mount. And that means Sense is actually booting up and trying to reconnect to Wi-Fi. Back in the app, it'll take anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds to start sending data again. And it's back. For users that have more devices isolated, another thing they've noticed is that devices that have been previously isolated don't always show up depending on where it's plugged in. A good example of this is if you have a device like a vacuum cleaner whose electrical signature has been isolated on an outlet on phase A. If it's plugged into an outlet on phase B, this doesn't guarantee that the vacuum's electrical signature will show up as the same bubble again. There are many reasons for this, including noise on the different phases, wiring differences, and even the different wiring distances from the panel. Sense has commented that this doesn't mean that they don't recognize the signature of the device. It's again that the algorithms need to learn what the device's signature looks like on the other phase. It's all part of the data they collect, and every bit of data helps to improve detection. An example of this in my own setup is if I unplug this adapter, which is on the bedroom breaker. If I plug in that same wall adapter into this bathroom branch, which I know is on a separate phase. Sense is able to isolate it as the same lights, but this may not always work if it's more complex load like a vacuum cleaner or other device. Another thing that Sense isn't able to do yet is group devices that it's detected together. This comes up when a single device has multiple electrical components inside. For example, a fridge can have a compressor, a light, a fan. If Sense isolates all these different components, they show up as separate devices. My own example is this convection oven. It has a heating element as well as a fan. Other examples are like the dishwasher. It has a pump a heating element, and other things inside it. Once Sense isolates these two components, it'd be more intuitive if they can be combined into a single device in the app. Some users have commented asking how Sense's algorithms work, and obviously they're not going to reveal anything beyond what's in the patents. Sense has recently hired more data scientists and closed a round of funding in September 2016, so I fully expect continued improvement in its performance, especially as more users install and add data to the data set. While it hasn't isolated as many devices in my home as I had hoped, we actually don't use that much power and have a relatively large always-on load. 
that Sense has consistently been able to isolate devices as low as 29 watts and continues to improve their detection ability, it's really only a matter of time. Sense also recently sent out a survey for homeowners with electric vehicle chargers. Unfortunately, my charger is in P2 and isn't on the same breaker panel, obviously, or else I would be contributing yet another data point to their algorithm. Sense has promised to release new features, such as a web-based portal, and I fully expect them to add in other software-enabled functionality, such as billing, time of use, and device grouping. Bottom line, after nearly three months with Sense, would I recommend it? Yes, but you have to be patient. As always, be sure to read the description for more links and info, leave any comments or questions below, and thanks for watching. There will be another video in a few months.